happy to be here with you all. Um, but you know, honestly, you guys have all heard these over and over again. It might be a good time for you to take a coffee break. <laughs> still be here, you, know, you won't miss anything. But uh, Lois, uh, thank you and the LA Baba Group for inviting us uh, and for our dear hosts, John and Karina, you know, they, they take such good care of us. Um, when, you, when your invitation came, Lois, I was petrified. She's not, uh, she's in. Hey? Yeah, she's in. Okay. Hey, what if she's in? Yeah. So uh, I said, I'm gonna, what on earth are we going to talk to them about? You know, we're not intellects, we're not scholars, we can't, you know, discuss on any any particular point about us. But she reminded me of what Eric had told us once, that, you know, you're so fortunate to have been with him, and especially him arranging our marriage. So he said, it's your duty to share this with, with his lovers. So, here we are. Forgive, forgive us if we don't come up to your expectations. We're, we're a very cheap, cheap package here. You don't get much out of us. <laughs> well, uh, the, the wedding story, that's, that's my claim to fame, so to speak, apart from me, born into his family, but you know, I don't know how that happened. Um, anyway, so my family home, as was referred to as Vila Villa. Actually, I was born there. Um, my mother died while I was giving birth to me, so my father went to inform Baba of this, and Baba happened to be at Mirabad attending Nariman and Anawaz's wedding celebrations. So, to my mother's good fortune, Baba decided to come to Vilu's and be at my mother's bedside when she pleaded her last. And so she was very blessed. Um, and then mother said, well, where's the baby? And I was taken to another room, put in a crib. So I was told he came up to the crib and played with my little pinky finger and then left. But of course he didn't leave. We, we, we looked cornered him and said, you know, how is how, if you are God, how are you allowing my sister to, 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 to die, you know? Anyway, so Baba took the time and sat with her for quite a while, explaining how karma and all of that. But of course, that was way over Baba's head. And anyway, that's a different story. So I grew up in that family. They adopted me as part of their family. For the first 13 years of my life, I lived there. And then, at the age of 13, I was shipped off, literally, I went by sea to England. And then I spent the next 15 years there. I call it as being in exile, because I really didn't enjoy it. Even though it was my own doing, my going to England. But again, that was a different story. So, I, I, after a couple of years, when all the fascination about life in London wore off, I longed to come back to India. Um, but the first opportunity I, I got was in December of '64, um, when my father, I, my my half sister Sheree, my father, by the way, remarried when I was about five years old. So I have a stepmother, her name is Freeney, and through that marriage I have a half-sister called Cherie, and they live in Santa Fe. I think you folks all know them. Um, so it was time for Cherie to have a thread ceremony. We call it Naljo, amongst the Zarashtans. And of course he wanted a father to bless her on that occasion. So we came to India, and I was ready. I packed all what little belongings I had, and I was ready. You know, to, come back to India and not go back to England. But of course, <coughs> Baba told me, no, it's not time to go back. But he allowed us to stay there for three months. So from December of 64 to March of 65, uh, we were there. But being there, we, I, of course, I stayed with Vidu uh, at Vila Villa. 
but Baba would invite us to Marazad. Well, almost every week we'd go there and spend the day there. And for, for me, for most of us, it was like visiting the family because Baba was my uncle, Mani was my aunt, Koer was related to us, and you know, it was. So we go and spend the day there. Um, as, as we arrived at Meraza, we'd be greeted by Erich and the rest of the Mandi, and then the women would be escorted to the lady side, and my father and I would stay back and wait for Baba to come to Mandi Hall. And when he'd come, of course, we'd greet him, he'd ask us for, uh, after our health, how we slept, and then we'd just, I would just, what would the rest of the money would just sit there, and for most of the time, I'd just be a spectator. I had very little to say. I was very shy and nervous, which, which yeah. And um, in fact, I would seldom even look up at Baba. I'd be looking at his feet more than looking at his face. But once in a while, Baba would turn to me and say something. And on this one occasion, he turns to me and says, Dara, don't worry, I've already chosen the right girl to be your wife. No, he said perfect wife. <laughs> I'm, joking. I'm joking. I, 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 um, I was 20 at this, at my age, at this time, I was 20. So, I don't know where that came from. I just thanked Baba and that was it. Then the rest of my stay, there was no further mention of who this right girl could be, nothing. So, sadly, after the, the three months were over, time for me to go back to England. Uh, so I went back, continued my life there. By this time I was working in an engineering factory. My limited education was over and I was working. And three years go by before I again hear of Baba, uh, from Baba concerning this Perfect, right though. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what I get is a telegram from Baba. Now, this is around September, October of 67. I get a telegram from Baba asking me if I'm ready to get married. So I cable back, send a cable back to Baba in those days. That was the quickest way of communicating to say, Baba, Yes, any time you want me to. So, the next thing I know, my Baba's, mom, Baba's telling my father to come visit him in December of that year, 67, to talk about the arrangements for the marriage. I had st still no idea as to who this right girl is. I had no idea. So, before my father left to go to visit Baba at Merazad, uh, Baba instructed my father to take some, to take me to a photographic studio and get some mm -hmm. photographs of me taken, uh, which he used to bring with him. So my dad did that, and then he went to Merizal to discuss the wedding plans of Baba, and it was only after he came back, which was in. February of 68 that I got to know that Baba chose an honor to be my wife and I think at this point now I'm um, going tell her side of the story. Sorry, I'm in your mind. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was listening. <laughs> okay, my story starts itself. Uh, my family came to, I had a couple of different stories and somebody was reminding me that I should talk about my father. But as that started already about uh, how we got married, so I'll stick with that part and maybe different occasion tomorrow or something. Hi, my friend. I'll talk about uh, that. So, to start with, uh, my first introduction or hearing about Baba or it was a new lifetime when Baba was first visiting in 49. 
North India at that, that part of his new lifetime. And my parents, my, especially my father, had just came to Mehra Baba, which is, as I said, another story how he came to Baba. And uh, the whole family got introduced to Baba now. Mother started uh, respecting, maybe a little belief was there too, but not, she was not completely with Baba. And so was my grandmother. My grandmother, we came from Hindu Brahmin families, so it's not easy to accept uh, a new guru or different religion or different calling somebody else a god or something. So the but father was completely with Baba by that time. And he wanted his wife, mother, or his children to be with Baba too. So it, that new lifetime, my, when Baba first came to this village which called Meher Mafi in foothills of Himalayas place called Dehradun, there was this little village called Marshi Mafi, but my father changed the name and called it Meher Mafi. And that time when Baba first visited Meher Mafi, my mother was expecting me that time. And then Baba those days would come, he was traveling, he was there in that area for almost six months, he would go and come back and things like that. And by the time he came back, after a few months later, I was born. And my mother was shy, you know, like a, you know, very simple family and all generations and very westernized Parsis and all that. So, you know, she just, that couldn't mix much with them. But somehow maybe my father told her or she decided that uh, they won't name me till Baba comes with and um, his ladies, companions, man, money, when they come to this village to stay in this cottage, we'll go and ask them for, um, I mean, baby's name. My mother was, as I said, too shy or not to open with Baba as yet, so she went to Mihran Mani and asked about the baby's name. And that's the name they suggested. They asked Baba if they could name the baby Amrit, and so fortunately I got this name from Nehran Mani, with Baba's uh, blessings, whatever. And uh, so that's how my life started. Of course, one wouldn't remember all that, mm -hmm. but I was told that I was taken and was put on Baba's lap for his blessings. Thank you, Baba. What I remember now, later, when I'm almost four years old. Baba came back in 54 again for that darshan program, big darshan. You must have seen that movie with all the young kids are putting garland on Baba's school kids. There was, so he goes, there was supposed to be a bumblebee in that uh, big garland which was wrapping around on Baba's head. So I remember, even though I was only four years old, but I remember uh, meeting Baba. I remember lots of little stories connected to that time. And I saw him a couple of times. But that's it. After that, till I was 17, uh, father used to go regularly to, even travel with Baba to South India, Andhra, and all that. In photographs, you see him holding Baba's umbrella and all that, and Nasik, and coming to Pune and Satara and all that. But he couldn't afford to bring the family, or we maybe we weren't invited, as we were five brothers and sisters by that time. So. So I didn't see Baba for 14 years, I mean, till, till the time I received a letter from Baba. Up till now, Baba was communicating with Father. He would always would ask, how's children doing, how things, but somehow I was uh, very mischievous. <laughs> I'm not anymore. <laughs> glad I, I was like that because my father would lie and my such and such son is like that and all. and I'm rich, she done this and she done that. And so I was kind of, you know, like a, a little extra line I got in his letters for Baba. There was time even Baba would write letters and what Amrit is up to now. So that little connection was there. Money would send some toys for us as we were growing up and things like, she would make those toys with herself and say, Anyway, so this thing was going on, we were growing up, loving Baba of our own ways and uh, taking for granted too, not studying and repeating his name at exam times so and things like that was going on. So, but now, when I was 17, I received a letter from Baba 
And it was like a big brown envelope, and there was lots of uh, sheets of papers inside, and plus the photos which Val is talking about, that, uh, that his mug shot from the studio. <laughs> Yeah, were in that envelope. So when I opened the envelope, the, the somehow, oh, by the way, it was the first time I ever received a letter from Baba. It was through family. Baba wasn't writing, of course. Uh, Erich wrote, it was Erich's handwriting. It was handwritten, not the letter, not the type. And, um, uh, yeah, but it was like Baba is talking to me. It was like Baba is writing to me. It was like that, the letter. So this letter had a capital letters on top, two lines, and said, no, of course, dear Amrita, I think, read this letter carefully. Do not take as my order. I'm just asking you, would you marry my nephew Dara? And then everything about Dara, you know, his birth, his mother is no more, still father he married, he lives in England, his education now, what type of jobs, he, everything about his health, about his eyes, and the, the problems his eyes has, and people do go blind. So he, you know, made me prepared for that too, so then he, one day he could go blind with that. And then, then he said, as I said earlier, very clearly, do not take as my order, I'm just asking you, and the whole, a uh, long letter in detail and everything was there about that. I, we had a house upstairs, downstairs, and upstairs was my brother in my room. So I was reading this letter alone in my room, and when I opened, these photos fell. And uh, one thing that I had in those is long hair, and they were dark and things, I and mean, they were like a Beatles style. Like how the Beatles did their, their hair. And living in Dehradun, and those days, Beatles used to be in Rishikesh, which is like a part of it, you know, half an hour drive to it. We had, I have seen them in the, in the 60s when they were there with Mahare, Maharishi Yogi. So the hair looks so much like those them. So then I realized, of course, that he's good looking. <laughs> And he's uh, Baba's nephew, that's the thing. But for me, that was second. The first thing was Baba asking me something. That part did not go that, even that is, I, it was more than his order, even though he said it's not my order and all that. And I decided, even only reading once that letter, yes, Baba, I would marry your nephew. Had no idea Baba got, we knew Baba got a brother and sister and all that, but they have children, they're married and things, nothing. It was up, just out of the blue, this uh, introduction was then through that letter. So I said, yes. End of the letter was saying, and your family has to agree too. So share this letter with your family. And But I don't know what happened. Uh, I just, I had a side bicycle, cycle. So, and those days again, as I said, telegram. So I went to telegraph office, which was a couple of miles away from home. I went there and sent two lines, little thing. Yes, Baba, I would marry your nephew, Tara. That's it, I said on that telegram, sent it to my mother and father and the rest of the family knew I had received the letter from Baba. But they didn't know what is it. So before leaving for post office, I left that letter in my father's hand. So he must have read it while I was away. So when I came back, he was kind of really scared, little, they thing, and my mother is looking, okay, what happened? <laughs> so I so told my father, I said, yeah, I sent telegram to Baba saying, yes, I would marry. So my mother said, but you don't know, you know, like, and he's gonna go blind, and you know, he's a thing, and he doesn't look like Indian, he doesn't. <laughs> but my, you should have listened to your mother. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, yes, yeah, so, but my father with big open arms and he gave me a big hug and he says, you know, that's how it's supposed to be. To both of us it was, he wouldn't ask unless it's, it's supposed to be like that. And uh, so when I sent the telegram to Baba, within uh, 24 hours later, a telegram was there that I'm very happy with the answer. And I would like to invite you and your father. Very soon he gave us only like three, four days to get ready. And I'm still very tomboyish, still don't wear, you know, 
fancy clothes or something. I'm a village girl. I'm just uh, when I say village, it's not like what you see in Aranga or something. Mm-hmm. North Indian villages are soil is very rich, and we are farmers, and our education was in good schools and things like that. But uh, way of thinking, or you know, we want like modern people or high standards and things like that. And but Baba was in our life. So all of a sudden, my God, what I'm going to wear, this, that, other, this whole thing had started. And uh, I still remember it was, I think, 19th of September when we, uh, my father and myself, we started to form Mehraza. Now, I did as long as you did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you finished that. What yes. happened then? Okay, what happened then? Because I'm still out of the picture. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so... Um, Even now? Yeah. Even now. <laughs> of course. Oh. <laughs> yeah, for the last 48 years, yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, so my father and myself... So, as I said earlier, you know, like, because father was completely with Baba and he brought his family, he... My father's name is Kumar, Shatrughan Kumar. He's the guy you must have read the story who was in a British prison and called for Mr. God. So, anyway, so father, he would visit Baba regularly, he'd come and tell us these beautiful stories about Baba. What I, I remember when I was four years old, beautiful Baba who's walking, his hair flowing, and you know, coming and visiting our house and coming and visiting that new life quarters which is very close to our house. So so now when I'm 17, I still had that picture in my mind. I'm gonna, you know, go and see Baba in Mirazad. But when the traveling started, this is a very sensitive part for me, this thing. All of a sudden, I, the thought came in my mind, Baba. I'm going to see Mir Baba, you know, who my father worships, and we stand with him and do his prayers and all that. And you know, it's like like that question: Why me? I'm, you know, what? Why? Why I'm the one who did, has given this chance and chosen to be with him? And these thoughts started in my mind, and what it did to me. I became very quiet, I couldn't eat anything far away. And those days traveling used to be almost three days. We have trains, of course, uh, changing a couple of times, several, several, several hours of uh, waiting for another train, and then you to come by Bombay and then to Naga, so long time. And as soon as I sat down in train, something started like, I'm going to see Mir Baba, but why me? And how it will be when I see him, what will happen? And, these thoughts started, and that made me go very quiet, and um, I couldn't eat. I was saying, my father got scared. He thought, I'm changing my mind or something. So he's asking, me, okay, everything is all right. Yes, everything is all right, you know. And I couldn't even tell him why I'm becoming like that. And as the train is going closer and closer, days passing by, it took almost two and a half, three days. By the time I reached, we reached to Amanagar, I'm completely like a nervous wreck or so excited inside how it will be to see God. That was the final this thing, you know, I'm going to see God. I mean, and so when we go there, there's Dr. Duncan and Baba's secretary, Adi Senior, they were at the railway station with Duncan's new car and so they welcomed us, me and my father and I was still very quiet. Father tried to, so you know, before he said, you know, you should talk, you know, greet everybody and things. I must have greeted. We already had started saying Jai Baba those days. Must have said Jai Baba to Adi and uh, Duncan. But I was sitting back seat next to my father, very quiet. So Dr. Duncan realized that either I'm very shy or, or something is going on. So he looks back. He said, by the way, I'm Dr. Duncan. But as the locals call me donkey, you can call me donkey. <laughs> the locals couldn't say full word donkey, really, but they were calling Dr. Donkey. <laughs> so that kind of lightened me up a little bit. I smiled and I said, you know. So it was like, a, then we were taken to a 
trust office. That time it was, trust office means Adi was there, was running the little office and replying letters and things. It was called Kushu Quarters. So there was rooms, his sister is still there, lots of other uh, workers were there and we were taken to Adi's uh, cottage house there to wash up, change and I think because we were going to Mehrazad now. So when we started with my, with my father, myself and Adi and Duncan took us to Mehrazad, and approaching that uh, road, which is one of my favorite road in the whole world, that Bamiyan tree is like a tunnel like and going to his home. And uh, so we're going in that, and my heart is pounding now because I know in very few minutes I'll be seeing Meher Baba, I'll be seeing God, and I'll be seeing God. Then it was like a. So when I reached, and of course, that time there was. Um, Men Mandli was, you know, cars always went to work from the Men Mandli side. There was hardly anything, only Baba's Mandli Hall and long barracks and another little cottage on the side, but no, that old clinic, a garage, anything, it was all open. And as soon as I got out from the, got down from the car and went towards the men's side, whomever I saw, the Mandli, there were lots of my members and there were Kaka Baria and Baidul and of course Pendu and Francis Brevison, Erich, you know, and many, 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 you know. So I saw first uh, Baidul sitting on this chair and shaving. And to me, just <laughs> like, he looked like, just like Baba. And I, Baba, then I said, no, he's not Baba. Everybody looked like Baba that time because I, <laughs> Maybe because they stayed all their life with Baba, they started looking like Baba, or to me, just thinking about him. And then I saw Baidul sitting there, no, I said, this one is not Baba, that one is Baba. And I turned around there, and, you know, there were lots of Babas were there, but... <laughs> and at that moment, Arish came, and Arish is wearing his, uh, he didn't care, you know, the visitors are coming. Uh, little uh, cotton shorts, this thing, and no shirt on top. It's like a, like a bear. <laughs> and he's walking, oh, come on, yeah, yeah, welcome, come. I'm ready, come, come, come. You're late, it's already late evening, and you better go there, ladies are waiting for you. And uh, so I was literally, you know, without saying hello, Jay Baba, to any one of the manly side of the men. I was sent, the men manly side, I was sent to the ladies' side, Exactly from the same place where we go now to there's a blue bus and there's a little path there, you go there to there and when I started walking alone by my side because I saw this lady just standing there. I, I remember, as I said earlier in my story, I remember Baba completely, you know, but none of the monthly, only from their photographs and all that. So when I did it, again, there's lots of ladies were there. Mera, Maninko, Hirrano, Mehru, Naja, then all of them. And they were all standing there with a little uh, thali, we call it, like a little steel platter, with a lots of things in there, like little coconut, little candy, little something. They were welcoming me as uh, to their home. I was going to be a daughter-in-law to the, the family. So they, and as soon as I saw that, the tears started coming out because Meher Baba's monthly was to us, was like a god and goddesses and here they welcoming me such a beautiful, you know, this way. So, you know, like, I was kind of a little scared of this and plus being very, uh, not myself from the time I left home. So, that part, the, just, you know, as soon as I saw that Mehra and Mani and they all came down from that veranda step and welcomed me put a little, little red um, kumkum, we call a little, like a yukata, guys, so a dog, yeah. Yeah. and put a candy, and the candy symbolizes, come with the sweetness to our house, bring the sweetness to the, when you come, like a, not only clear your mouth, at this. and then we go to the veranda, and they all started asking questions, this, that, other, and the, but um, I was very quiet, and then Mehra said, I'm with, Baba's already gone to, and I'm all excited, I'm not interested what's going on, I wanted to go and see Baba, mm -hmm. embrace him or bow down to him or see this beautiful God standing there waiting for me. So 
Mihira or Maria I don't remember one of them said, I'm really sorry, you it's late, it's late in the evening and you cannot go and see Baba, you'll be seeing tomorrow morning. Can you imagine mm -hmm. three days of this living in that uh, condition and now I was told again, you can't. So I was very, you know, I don't know what, how I felt, but uh, my God, I had to wait again to see Baba. But that moment, as we were very close to Baba's room, I heard a clap too, and I never knew that's how Baba called, but somehow, because all these ladies left me there at Mehra's veranda, and they all went running to inside towards Baba's side of the room, mm -hmm. and uh, because it must be Baba's order when I called, come immediately, whatever you're doing, so they left me that often, you know. <laughs> so, after some time later, other ladies must have gone to their rooms and all that, only Mehra and Mani were there, and they both come out and they say, guess what, Baba said you can come and visit me now. He's still giving me this time. Now you could just imagine, you can, you know, I was just like a choking with this full thing, I'm gonna go in his room and uh, that's it. With, I'll be with Baba and just decide. So I was brought from here, so I saw backside of Mir Baba sitting and this, what I saw, uh, this really hunched down very much like that, going down and uh, wearing this white, thin, sadhara type of something and like that and uh, not even looking but it looked like, like, a, like some sick old man is sitting there. There was nothing that uh, God standing there with blessing me or, oh, yeah. <laughs> so I come gradually and I'm, I hesitated. Where is Mir Baba? I mean, you know, here is some old man sitting who looks sick and all that. And so I kind of hesitated to just go fast and then I, so I was, and that moment Baba realized that we are there near the door, so I saw this hand going up like that and he did like this and I realized that he's asking to come in front of him as he couldn't even turn Baba's. So I came in front of him and the tears had already started outside but now I'm standing in front of him and the tears are just pouring down and Baba looked with a little confusion, you okay? You know, so I nodded. When I saw, I didn't like it. I didn't like, I didn't see that to my Baba, he didn't look like God, he looked like, like a just sick old man. I didn't even fold in my hand to say, Jai Baba. I knew, you know, orders were there not to touch his feet. So anyway, I would have done all of that. I'm just standing there, just, Tears are pouring out and I'm, I just want to leave that room. That all that excitement of my arriving here wasn't there. It was, there was no God there. There was just uh, this sick old man sitting there. So I just I stood there, I'm feeling hot, I'm sweating and I wanted to leave the room. And that moment, Baba raised his hands up like that and I had no idea when I went for his embrace for that too with his folded hand and he's kind of wrapped me and I still remember that I put my head on his shoulder and I'm still weeping and then his sadra which was got a little wet here and what I saw his beautiful shimmery skin Baba was very beautiful pink and thin and that skin is shimmering on his shoulder like that, and it couldn't have been more than a few seconds, or it seems like a long, but that embrace was thing that I was really, uh, I felt I'm with my God, I'm with my beloved Baba. That moment, you know, that embrace was, that's what I guess, gave me everything that I was looking for. And uh, then, I don't know how long I was there, and then he kind of literally pushes me. And that his embrace was not a sick old man, it was like a healthy person is giving you this uh, beautiful embrace. And then he pulled my, this uh, um, body back, you know, with a little force, and he looked at my face, and I saw in his face, there was a few lines, and he's like, you hear me, I have to prove myself to you every time. <laughs> Honestly, I got that feeling when I came back, you know, about that face. You know, it's like, a, you're happy, and then he said, you okay, you're all right. 
All of us in the room was beautiful, you know, felt nice and cool and lovely smell and thing, and he just wanted to hug him again. And, you know, I was with my beloved, and he's, so he said, I'm ready. So the reason I was called there was for to talk about this wedding. You know, so he said, I'm with you, look tired, long traveling, go take, uh, have something to eat. Wow, well, very practical, the detail he will give you. And then, go and sleep and then tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock, uh, somebody must, uh, must have said we'll meet at that dining room 8 o'clock and uh, uh, then we will go to Mandli Hall and have a talk. So, of course, I don't remember leaving that room even or eating anything or anything. What I remembered after that next morning, I'm jumping. So I was given room with Naja because Arnavas wasn't in Menaza, she was living in Bombay still. Katie was still in Bombay working with the Japanese embassy. So that building there was only Ranu and Mehru, they had a room back home and that front room where Arna was living, most of you saw her there, was Naja's room and next bed was given to me. <clears throat> so I stayed there for um, several days. And uh, but the next morning when I woke up, you want to say something? No, I think you need to finish this. Yeah. So next no, one. No. So next. That's more interesting than mine. <laughs> I know. <Sorry. laughs> so next morning, you know, all of a sudden when I woke up, I realized I'm late, and so I quickly, you know, like do brush whatever, and I run to the dining room. I and there I saw a beautiful scene. Bhavas was sitting and head of the table. We've been most of you to Baba's dining room, Mira's dining room. Baba's sitting that way, his chair is still there now. And that beautiful picture of Baba's black and white photograph in that wall. And Baba's sitting there, and there's this nice transparent wave of a um, cloth being tied like a bib on baby. And, and Mira's standing, his uh, left side, and she had freshly wiped his hair with a like damp towel or something. His face was glowing, like freshly washed, and she's combing, collecting all his hair, and doing this, and now and then she would look down. The scene was like mother and child. Mm -hmm. And this mother looking down, said, Baba, Baba. See, and there's this beautiful bowl in front of Baba with this uh, spoon, nice long spoon, and Baba, he had a little bit more because Baba couldn't sit too long on the chair, so she wanted him to eat. So Baba had he would do like that, you know, and he with a couple of spoons and put the spoon down. Again, Mira will just like mother is coaxing a child. Darling, Baba, please one more spoon, just one for me, just like you know. Exactly. I mean that scene was just like mother and child, and she really looked like a mother who's so concerned about it. And Baba. Even that just beautiful face and all that looked like a baby there with a beautiful shiny skin and sitting there. And again, he will he will do like that and he'll look up at me. I'm full, but then he will do like that. You hardly eat anything, a little bit more. It was very liquidy, grew like little parts, but very watery. So Baba could digest or have a little milky color and all that. So he had a couple of nice big white china bowl. So he's had a couple more spoons. And so this was going on, and again she looked, and then in the end, like going back, I can't, no more. Like, and the dog Mustan used to be always sitting there next to him on the side. And then Baba was taken to his room, and one side, when he, he, yes, when I came to the dining room, he was always sitting there, but when then later on we were all there, uh, I think it was Ranu and Mehra, I don't know why I remember, it wasn't money. Held Baba from both sides, helped him to walk, slow walk, to his room. And I remember we all were standing up and they left. And then Mehra comes back and gives that leftover Baba's powers, water powers to every, all of us, you know, on the plates we were given on that. So somehow I thought that maybe that's why she gave him so much food, so left from his mouth and his spoon, so we all slept and everybody could have. Anyway, now I was told around 10, 10, 30, Baba will be coming to Mandir Hall to talk about the marriage. So I was um, 
So I came, had my shower, the time changed, and I was there on time, this time I was on time. And Baba was brought in that chair, like four guys, you've seen that on movies or in the monthly hall, they still had that chair, it was long back handles and front handles, and they carried Baba to the monthly hall. And this time my third, uh, it's a third uh, visit with Baba, I saw completely third different Baba. This time Baba was like a businessman. He's all wearing his coat and all dressed <laughs> up and he's all tied up, nothing. He's not looking old, he's looking, you know, very ready for a go to his office and yeah. And he was brought there and he got down from that thing and sat down in a chair and asked about everyone. The, half the men Mandli was invited, not all of them. And uh, he's outside Mandli, whom I call like me. I didn't even know they were all coming. Mehirji Karkariya, Narim and Brother Chanji from Bombay, and my father was amongst them sitting there, and Adi Senior, and Dr. Duncan, and a couple of other, maybe Pendu because he was always. And from the lady's side, there was only Dr. Gohar and Mani, because Gohar, Dr. Gohar with Baba as doctor, and Mani as secretary. Yeah, or I'm forgetting Bilu and Sarosh for that. Oh, yes, the right. Main part. The main part. John, your seat is here. Yeah, here, in front. Here, yeah, John, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and Bilu Sharosh. And so this day, after, so you all, most of you, been to Baba's uh, Monday house. Bilu and Sarosh were representing me more than my father. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dara's father wasn't there. He had come, had a come, had gone. So, yeah. yeah, so. Vilu I sure was the one who raised him because his mother died and so they were like, he called them mom and dad, so they were like his parents, that was, yeah. And so I, some of the, all the people were sitting on the chair, but a couple of money, Erich was standing next to Baba. And I sat down with, the, now there's a Lenox painting is in that corner when you come from outside. Not from the lady side, but from the men's side when you come inside. Just in the left, this, uh, I was sitting in that corner, Baba came and sat down on each chair, and they started discussing about this wedding. And that day Baba decided it very will be in December. Uh, Mihira's birthday is on 22nd of December, so that day Amrit and Dara will get engaged. And next day is uh, <coughs> 23rd will, the, will be the wedding. Then Baba asked uh, uh, Mehirji and Arnava, uh, Nariman, do you have a list of guests? I had asked you from your own town, get the guest of the, the very close, because he, they were very huge number of Baba lovers all over, but they, you know, very close ones, you know, who were there for many years with Baba from childhood, I guess. All the Dada Chanji families and uh, Sattas and the manias of uh, Akbar Press and all that, no, there was a long list. So first discussion was about that. And then there was a discussion was uh, what will be, be the food will be served. And uh, that Dara will tell that story. He's, he tells really, yeah. Oh, I, w I wasn't there, but of course the story, I'm sure some of you would have heard it firsthand from Mani Aunty. She would often come in Monday Hall and tell this funny episode that took place during this discussion concerning the wedding. So, over the years, Baba would always turn to Vilu to help with catering. For instance, during the 54 Sahavas on the hill, when the Western men had come, he turned to Vilu and asked her to cater for the, for the Western men because he knew that you know the Parsi style of cooking was more suitable to uh, Western taste. So of course Vilu had come and set up a kitchen there uh, where Mansari's kitchen is during that period. And on many other occasions, Baba would uh, turn to Vilu and ask her to help out. Mm -hmm. So again, on this occasion, he turned to Vilu and asked her. Well, what do you suggest? We have, we'll have a little reception after the wedding. What do you suggest we should serve for food and drinks? 
So Vilu said, Baba, you know, as you know, as we know that there's a very limited budget. We can't have a very lavish affair. So as far as the food is concerned, um, you know, we'll have sandwiches and potato wafers and um, samosas and, you know, snacky type of food, which yeah, more, more, more for a you know, kids' birthday party than a wedding reception. <laughs> but, but, Saroj, of course, you know, he, he was turning up his nose up and all of this while Vilu was saying all this. But Baba said, good, you know, that, that's fine. So then Baba said, well, and what do you, what do you suggest for, for uh, refreshment, uh, drinks? Of course, no question of alcohol. So uh, Vilu again said, Baba, you know, the, limited budget, so I suggest we serve orange squash. Now, in those days, you get a bottle of concentrated orange, orange, and if you mix it with water, you get many glasses out of one bottle, and it's very economical. So now, Sarush lost it. He said, orange squash. Again, you know, you're acting as if it's like a uh, kid's birthday party. This is a wedding. What will people think you're serving orange squash? No, 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 no. At the best, we have to have Coca-Cola. <laughs> yeah, it was prestigious to uh, serve Coca-Cola in those days. So, he says, Sarush, you know, you're always interfering. You know, we can't afford to serve Coca-Cola. There's only a limited amount of budget. So Saru said, I don't care. We have to serve Coca-Cola. <laughs> and before you knew it, they were starting an argument amongst themselves. <laughs> Vilu shouting, orange squash, Saru shouting. Not only shouting, no, with an end. So, and Baba's sitting there, and he's enjoying all this. <laughs> <laughs> and after a little while, then of course he claps and brings both their attentions back to him. <laughs> and then he turns to Vilu and says, Vilu, what, what's the difficulty here? You know, everything was fine as far as the, the food is concerned now, what's the difficulty here? So we just said, Baba, you know, I mean, we can't really afford to serve Coca-Cola. There's not enough money for that. And uh, of course, you know, Sarosh is always interfering in matters he doesn't know anything about. <laughs> so, and the other day, you know, I'd given this party at the house for for some general, because you know, they were closely associated with the army. And you know, there wasn't this kind of headache. I didn't face this kind of headache. And she's holding her head. This, you know, my auntie's describing all this. <laughs> and then Baba said to her, yes, we do. But you, you're doing this for me now. And of course, then we do sort of, yes, yes, Baba. So Baba says, okay. I have the solution. <laughs> and look how practical you are. He says, yes, you're both right. You know, Vilu, we can't afford to serve Coca-Cola because there's not enough funds. Sarosh, yes, I mean, it seems a little childish to serve Coca-Cola, uh, orange squash, but why don't we go 50-50? Half the drinks will be Coca-Cola, half the drinks will be orange squash. <laughs> So Saroj seems to agree with this, but not Vilu. She said, Baba, there is going to be one problem. So Baba says, yes, what, what, what is that problem, Vilu? You know, Baba, nobody will drink the orange squash. <laughs> Can you imagine Lucky Coca-Cola? <laughs> so Baba says, yes, Vilu, you're very right. But look at the beautiful mm, solution. Once they finish drinking the Coca-Cola, they'll have to drink the orange <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Baba would hold his chin and look at, and he, he had quite often you've seen this position and he'll laugh, he'll look down and he'll laugh. Like, he's getting these chances in front of me and you're fighting over drinks. <laughs> I, I hope some of you have seen Money Auntie described this in Monday Hall. She's a tell, she's a really make it a real and she was the different there. voices, you know, she, yeah. Yeah. she's amazing. Yeah. Like Milu and then Sharosh. <laughs> <laughs> so again, I'm not there, this is all, you know, years after, after I come back from mm -hmm. England after the wedding. Then of course I... So I'll tell you then, what happened oh, there? Then yeah, continuing with all of that. Yeah? Yeah. Go ahead. So, yeah. So just a, some, so everything was planned that day, the guest list, the food, the drinks, the venue which we, and the time. Baba wanted everything to be early in the morning, even Mehra's birthday, Kamari engagement. Plus there was some, Navjo thing was done, you must have seen that Baba's giving Sadran Kasti in their hand and some four kids were there, that. And the next day would be the wedding, again early in the morning. <clears throat> everything has to be, the wedding reception, uh, uh, engagement to Mira's birthday was over by 11 o'clock. Same thing, the wedding next morning has to be done before 11 o'clock and 11, 11.30 maybe by the time people left. So in the Mandri Hall, we were sitting like that. So as I said, we grew up doing Baba's prayers because Father wanted us to <clears throat> stand in front of Baba's picture, fold our hands and uh, do the prayer. So that day, I'm sitting there and all of a sudden I said, okay, I'm sitting in front of Baba. Nobody's asking, that is not there. I was not asked a single question what I would like for my wedding. <laughs> <laughs> no, not even look, anybody looking at me, I think it was like, a, either it was all the elders were doing all the talking and planning and days and this mm -hmm. and all that. So I'm just sitting in the corner with the Linnaud's painting is underneath there. And I'm looking at his feet, looking at his action, he's talking this thing and with a you know, sometimes with a smile, sometimes worried, sometimes his eyes popping out. And <laughs> but Baba, as you've seen it, his hands always sort of you know, moved, you know, like that, and sometimes his feet too. So I was just looking at Baba's feet on that cushion, exactly the same place where you go and bow down now. And his hand so I'm looking at his hand and his feet and so I decided, we've been doing these prayers, let's do it now, not folding hands or saying like this in my mouth and just looking at his feet and doing. So I did my, and we used to do in Hindi, so I did the Parvadika prayer in Hindi and repentance prayer and you know, I'm just sitting there and all of a sudden I noticed as soon as I finished, I saw Baba did like that and then, yeah, you talk nothing and I thought, did I imagine because I wanted to Bow to acknowledge my prayers, it's my imaginations and all that. So the, then when the meeting was over, everybody, I asked my father and the father said, no, I didn't see anything like that, yeah. you know, that Baba's turning towards you and doing like that. And uh, then I asked ladies, Mandli, Mandli, nobody had money or thing, nobody saw, but believe me, I saw that and I, I can't, or even if I imagined, it was beautiful. <laughs> yeah, so. And then everything, and after that Baba, I stayed a few more days, he sent me to visit uh, Dara's families who were living, Dara's uncle and Vilu family and a couple of other relations were there, uh, Dara's stepmother's family and they were all in Amandagar, so we stayed a few more days after all these meetings and all that. We, and then Baba <coughs> sent me to Bombay, to Arnavas and Nariman and Kiti to go and do the wedding shopping. And before going, he says, uh, Amrit, uh, you're going for the wedding shopping. Uh, before that, one more thing was that my family was told uh, not to spend even a penny, not even a rupee on me, everything will be from Baba. Yeah. Hold my wedding. So, you know, they were like parents, they gave me a name, they arranged my marriage, and now they're spending the money for me. Even my train fare coming from home to, to for the wedding to the Mirabal. Mm -hmm. So now I was sent to Bombay to do the wedding shopping and it will, will be all paid for whoever must be, yeah, must be Anavas and all that. So before leaving, Baba said, <clears throat> so you'll be buying your wedding sari there. So I said, I guess yes, Baba, you know, because, so which color? He cannot, can you imagine? Mm -hmm. Baba in going in such a detail. Mm -hmm. So, I said, Baba, I'm from uh, 
Hindu background and in our side, like my sisters, all our friends and all that were beautiful bright colors with a little gold work on it or silver work, then a very bright red color mainly or then you know, so he again one of that he's thing holding gin and thinking and he looks like that. Then he says but the Parsis and Westerners and all were white, Dylan's like a so then he did his hand, why don't we join these two colors and you wear pink? <laughs> yes, you wear pink, so it will be red and white and you wear, it's like a joining the East-West and you wear pink. So, yes, Baba. So then that was a little thing and there were so many other little things that uh, I was sent to Bombay and that's what Anavaz helped me and Havobi came along with us and we, Katie couldn't come. And then they, I was there for almost like a four or five days or maybe a whole week because, you know, going for blouses and slips and things like that. So they decided in the evening, take me to the English movies because we weren't used to English uh, dinner. So the movie, Narayana Narnavaz and couple other Babalas were joined in to take me. It was the movie, a comedy called How to Kill Your Wife. <laughs> Then uh, I was from Bombay, I was sent home and then came back in December. One more thing had happened when, uh, it's nothing personal, <laughs> I was uh, quite chubby. I had put on lots of weight as growing up and all that. And when I was visiting Baba before he sent me to Bombay, he saw me and he said, I'm like, you're the real sign of the thing. <laughs> God, I'm look younger than you. So when you go home, reduce some weight. It's really happened. Yeah, yeah. So I felt embarrassed and all that. I was really um, a nice, healthy person. <laughs> That's why when the, the first photograph of her I received, it was just her face. <laughs> In case you know. In case you said, not married, a big girl. <laughs> yeah. And so Baba, so, so the day I'm saying goodbye to Baba, it's my home now, Baba is mine, and big lots of hugs and lots of this thing. So Baba said, you're going home, so don't run around too much in sun and reduce some weight. He did like that, you know, a little bit less, otherwise you look older than Dara. <laughs> I did look old for my age, you know, it's uh, that time. And I look much younger than my age now. <laughs> Yeah, I have to say things like that. <laughs> so I go home, after shopping in Bombay, I go home and tell my family, because only father knew all about it, so my sisters, mother, cousins, aunts, uncles, all that, I'm getting married <clears throat> in December. And then immediately after wedding, we're moving to England, don't know when we're coming back, and they, they know it's like all that thing, I was living in England, working there. So everybody started inviting me for meals, my friends and relations. Oh, you won't get that in England. No, you won't. They, they won't have this thing there. And, and I'm foodie. I love food. So I just, you know, without thinking what Baba had told me, maybe completely even forgotten. And I'm just eating. And oh, Baba, I'm God, became real fatter. So I. <laughs> So when I came back in December, Baba called us at the 10th of uh, December, we reached Mehrabad and the uh, engagement was 20... Mehrabad. sorry. 22nd was the engagement, so it's like a 10, 11 days before that. So now it's my territory, I know where to go, there's no more welcoming thing, but party standing up, we come to me. This time my mother is with me and the rest of the family would come just a day before the wedding. My sisters, brothers, some cousins, some relations were coming. So I go there and immediately after washing, changing quickly and I went to Baba's room. I went to Baba's room, first thing, Baba saw me and he's again that frown and he said, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> I put on more weight. <laughs> and 
I was so embarrassed. I started choking, coughing, you know, feeling, you know, like a... So Baba said, go ahead, go and see what's the matter with her. He would do it exactly that. Come, come, go see. Dina, she... So go ahead, come and say, Baba, she's got a little fever. She's, I think she must have caught something that day. I said, take her out. And then he didn't want her to catch. <laughs> then the punishment started. <laughs> take her. See Baba for those things, and just like a 50 feet or 100 feet away from him, Gahar would come, and then sometimes even they call doctors from outside too. My fever wouldn't go down, and there's only the pills or something, and then sometimes maybe clear soup when I was slightly better, and that's. I was in crash diet for 12 days. 12 days was the engagement. And uh, my mother comes, you know. And some of people said to Baba Sharosh and said, Baba Amrit is really sick. Should we postpone in you know, a few days more? Baba said, no, I don't have time. It has to be. Nobody knew. Everybody thought Baba does not have time for his universal work. So Baba, well, Baba said, no, 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 everything will be fine. Everything will be all right. So on the 22nd, early morning, very, very early morning, my mother wakes me up and she's going to have a light shower and it's engagement day and after shower, they put me on this dressing gown and took me to from back to Mehra's room. There's Mehra's. I never even saw my engagement side. I saw the wedding side on Mehra's bed and uh, some jewelry, some perfume, some makeup, everything is kept. And again, I'm by so fortunate they they were they helped me to I didn't even I learned a little bit how to wear sari but as I was not interested in saris and all didn't know how to do proper sari to for engagement to be from the public and all so they helped but uh, money called Dara's cousin Rusnu Sarab sister Gulnar she was there to help and uh, Mehra Mani Gulnar Mehru they were all in that room and they helped me to they put little bangles in my hand and asked me how I'm going to do hair, so I said I'll tie it back or something like that. I had a long hair. And uh, so they dressed me for the engagement and again next day for the wedding too. So, what a beautiful brightness. <laughs> then I was taken, the mirror took me to Baba's room and I saw Baba and I'm like a little, I looked at Baba and tears are coming and Baba, I'm not feeling well. How beautiful you look. Oh, you slim down. You look down. Well, I still have fever. No, no, no. Everything's fine. You look great. Beautiful. You know, it's like okay, okay. So when Baba was saying that, you know, everything has. I haven't seen Dara yet. I had somebody had told me Dara is in town, but because I was so sick, we weren't allowed to meet. So now, I, Dara was already. His engagement day was called and he's in Mira. It was made into like a little stage, you know, like a... Uh, and then you want to tell them. Yeah, I think uh, I should get a word in here now. <laughs> so where I stopped was way back in 67, after receiving that cable from Baba, asking if I was ready to get married. And... So, of course, I'm still not on the scene, but I'm hearing all this from Maniaki. So what happens when I cable back to Baba, Baba, yes, every time you want me to, Baba calls the ladies into his room and says to them, you know, I promised that boy, Dara, that I'd find him a wife. <laughs> so help me. Yeah. So, of course, they suggest a few suitable girls from Baba Lava family, and for some reason or the other, Baba didn't seem to agree, you know, um, agree or whatever. And then finally, I think it's money. He remembers Amrit from the time, uh, you know, they were in, in, in there the doing the, And I'd say she was only four years old at the time when they left. Um, so Baba Kumar's daughter, Amrit. So Baba says, good suggestion. But you know, we haven't heard, I mean, we don't know whether she's already been thrown to somebody or already married. So, through the other Baba lovers in Dehradun, discreetly find out if she's still available. 
<laughs> kind of falls in its destiny, what habit she was. <laughs> so, lucky you. Uh, lucky me. <laughs> yeah. But you know, I'm, I'm, uh, this, this Baba, as I say, was always very natural and practical. So this was one side, and, and then after we got married, one day when we were with him in his room, um, he turns to me and he says, you know Dara, when Amrit, as she described, when Amrit was a little baby, when I was in her house, um, her mother brought her and placed her on my lap to have my blessings. Mm -hmm. That's when I chose her to be your wife. Oh, oh. oh. I'm <laughs> So just in case I had any doubts about the right girl. <laughs> Anyway, um, so of course the, the, the dates of the wedding was set as Amrit was there and I of course knew about it much later but then I got word from Baba to say that uh, the wedding was fixed for the 23rd and 22nd was the engagement and I should take leave from work, I was working by now and come to get married and then returned back to England with Amrit. So I took leave from work and I arrived just two, three days before the wedding. Um, and I get to Vilus, which is my home. And from there, of course, the next day, I go to Mirza to visit Baba. This is now the 21st. Um, and after that, go back. I, 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 since she, that was that was the day I, actually I was supposed to first see Amrit or I was supposed to meet, but since she was not well, um, we, we couldn't see each other. So the first time we set eyes on each other was actually on the engagement day, mm -hmm. which the, but the but the main function was Mera's birthday celebration. Yeah. yeah. So of course I was escorted abroad from Vilus to Mera's art. I was the first to arrive there on on the veranda. There were two chairs placed there, and I was told to sit in one. And uh, I looked up and I saw the sea of faces there. Most of them. Now I could see that time. Yeah, I had, some, uh, I had probably about 50, 60 percent of my vision still left. Wow. So I saw these people who, most of them, you know, I didn't know at that time. I only got to know them later on. Um, and I was horrified. I was, you know, I, I'm not a person to, that's, you know, be on stage, so to speak. So to say, luckily I can't see you all here, otherwise I will run out of the door. <laughs> but of course, so, um, so, you know, I, 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 I was sitting there very nervous. And then Amrit was escorted out of the room after she well, it was taken to Baba, Dada. and um, I s stood up and I had no idea what, what to do next. Whether to shake up by the hand and say, nice to meet you, or whether to touch, you know. Anyway, I must have said something and just sat. No, he did not say anything. Didn't say anything. No, he just stood there and I came and then we both sat down. Yeah, then we were told. And Baba was shaking. Yeah. You know, uh, very often I say, we were, we were almost like guests at our own wedding. <laughs> everything was planned by Baba. Baba is there. What wedding? Well, yeah, everything was planned by Baba according to his instructions. We were just told, you know, to be there. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, as soon as Amit was brought, word got to Baba that she's there, we're both there, and then Baba was wheeled out of his room. And then, of course, beautiful. The, everything changed. The whole atmosphere changed. It's like light there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was like a, the even thought didn't come that we don't know each other. So it was like Baba lovers, all love, same person. Then it was so beautiful. And we stood there, and Erish came announced, introduced us, kind of. You know, people knew, but everybody didn't know. They knew who I am, whose daughter whose nephew or whose son, but uh, they did introduce us and Erish did all that. 
and uh, then Baba <coughs> Arnavas brought these rings and put it in Baba's hand, engagement ring, and we both picked up from his hand, and we then exchanged the rings, and still we haven't talked. We didn't even, you know. I, I, and then these 200 guests are sitting, I couldn't even look up the other day's face, that it was kind of embarrassing. So, we, you know, then we were not, then we engaged and there was some music program. What else was there then? And, uh, well, it was, I would say the, the, the main, main function was Mera's birthday celebration. So again, I, for, I forgot to say that ooh, discussion about what to, food, you know, food to serve and drinks, that, that also was for Mera's birthday because we had a little reception after her birthday. Anawaz had brought you know, the cake from Bombay for Mera's birthday as well as for our wedding cake, which was the following day. And then, you know... Cake was brought to Baba, Mera's birthday cake. Yeah. While we're sitting there in this thing, it's, it's not a ceremony or anything, as you know, Baba and Baba, it's just exchanging things and garlanding him. Anyway, since she was still running, oh, sorry, since, since she was still running a fever, she was whisked off to her room. <laughs> and after, after Baba went, you know, this is after Baba went back into his room. Because Baba went to his room. Yeah, he, 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 he didn't spend much time, he wasn't well, he didn't. So, um, Amrit was taken to the room, the one that Bhava occupied, and I, let's say most of the crowd, I, 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 I didn't know, I had no idea who they were, uh, but of course, there was still the Saurabh were there, and you know, I, I know them pretty much all the years I was in, before going to England. So I saw them and I made a beeline for them, and of course you know how they are before and before you know it, they are cracking jokes and laughing and, you know, so I joined in and we were having a good, good, good time together. And then I feel a hand on my shoulder tapping me. So I look around and it's Anawaz and she says, Dara, wouldn't you like to get to know Amrit? <laughs> <laughs> so she come, come, come. So she leads me to where Amrit is. And of course Amrit's, you know, in bed, she's lying down. As I, uh, as I enter, she sort of sits up on the bed and then, you Can you imagine meeting first time? <laughs> and Amrit, yeah. and Noah says, you know, yes, why, sit, why don't you sit next to her on the bed? And I, so I do that very, hmm, uh, what shall I say, uh, you know, feeling very, very uncomfortable about all this. Um, but then, you know, then, she, then of course she leaves. And, uh, well, we no, 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 can I tell this? Yeah. <laughs> sitting on, I don't know what to say, we might have said Jai Baba or something, and I'm sitting and he's sitting, he's feeling and then looking down, that is kind of shy too, and, I'm, and the other thing is like, um, so we didn't know how to start, what to say, so living in England for so many years, become a, he's become completely like British gentlemen, so what they talk about, they talk about weather. <laughs> Nice weather down there, or something like that. It's, it's, it's a nice sunny day, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you have breeze outside. See, see, there was a communication problem. Um, Amrit at that time spoke very little English, and I had forgotten most of my Hindi. So how to communicate? Uh, anyway, so, so of course, after making a new, uh, making making an idiot of myself, I decided it's time to leave. So I got up and. <laughs> walked out of the door, and to my utter amazement, Anawaz was still standing there. She says, what happened? I said, nothing much. <laughs> so she said, come on, come on. So she again takes me back into the room, and she sits with us for an hour, breaking the ice between us. See, the conversation was there. Yeah. So that was that. And then, you know, I go back to Vilu, she was still there at Merazad. 
then the following day, same, same, same setup. I arrived first at Mirazad, escorted to one of the chairs there, and then she brought, and then Baba's brought out of the room, and I say, so, we, yeah. yeah, so again, same thing. <laughs> this day, you know, like, uh, Baba, you've seen the film, he looks so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I was put, you know, I gave me that pink sari, which Baba wanted me to wear. And, <clears throat> and uh, we were brought, I came out, and that is there. Then Baba comes. And same thing again, Baba, you know, uh, Erich again announces <coughs> about the wedding and all this. How blessed we are, how fortunate. How blessed we are, are. fortunate. So, yeah. So again, Baba is holding our wedding bands. wedding bands in his hand, which we picked up. And that's what I was making sure that you don't lose it yesterday. <laughs> so, yeah. And we picked up the rings and um, put it on each other. And then we garlanded Baba. After garlanding Baba, Baba said, what about garlanding each other? Yeah. We didn't arrange this marriage. We didn't even sort of, you know, like a, they would no, nobody asked us. We didn't even think about that. So he looks up and then my darling Baba, he says at his feet, there were all these people who bring garlands and he would touch and, you know, and he would put them there or somebody would put them. Pick up two garlands from here and garland each other. Aww. And we, you know, that's how we got married. We garlanded each other with those Baba's two garlands. Mm -hmm. And we were an husband and wife. So you may not say, kiss the bride. You know. <laughs> <laughs> So same, simple, no ceremony, no, you know, and, but Baba being, as I always said, very practical, of course he knew there had to be some legal document. Mm -hmm. So prior to all this, the registrar what was called at Vilus, and uh, he was, you know, Baba wanted this uh, early in the morning, I mean, <clears throat> yeah, early in the morning, early meaning, at nine o'clock. So this registrar was pulled out of his bed by Saroj <laughs> and, um, at eight o'clock he was brought to be loose and we Can you imagine them. Indian officer <laughs> coming at eight o'clock? <laughs> yeah. And so that Baba was also taken care of by Baba. Yeah. Then okay, so now you must be wondering now we husband wife. <laughs> Again, I would be loved by our practical Mir Baba, knowing two things, I'm not well, and second thing, we really don't know each other. So I was asked to stay back in Mirazad, and he would go back to Vilu Villa, and then he was invited every day to come to Mirazad. And that's our escorting, or whatever we call, he would give his car and driver mm -hmm. to us, to take us to visit So Vilu. the courtship started after the wedding. Yeah. <laughs> And then in the evening, that will bring me back home, I mean, to Mirazad became my home, and he'll go back to Vilus, and it happened for a few days like that. Then, for some official reason, we have to go to Pune, then stayed in Pune, then we have to even go, because I was going with him, so passport, this, that, other, those days, it wasn't so difficult. And we would visit Baba, you know, every time that would come to pick me, he would come, and he would take me out with him. So we'll visit with Baba, and... Uh, Second day he came, it was Dara's birthday, 24th of December. Mm. And uh, yeah, and Baba gave him some gifts and all that. Then next day something, then was every day. So one day, after three, four days of our going around, he went to Central Store and to see the cave and you know, spending more time, longer time together. He asked one day, do you love each other? Mm. And uh, you know, with, with Baba, didn't he never say no for anything? <laughs> even if, didn't, even yes, if we don't even know each other or things like that. And it was not that we didn't love or we loved. So why just say no part? Why not? So we kind of both nodded. You know, we just, <laughs> yeah. So Baba is smiling and you could see the twinkle in his eyes. He's up to some mischief now. So he said, oh, you love each other. And Mira standing, my mother standing, my, and the, Somehow, maybe Baba must have called for this little drama there now. <laughs> so four or five um, uh, ladies are there, not men, Monday's in his bedroom, he's sitting on the bed. So, so when we both said yes, he says, so that 
they were like in Western Wedding and he kissed each other or whatever. So we didn't have posts like that in public thing. Then the room, he says, kiss each other. Then I'm like, uh, you love each other? We said, yes. Oh, kiss each other. Show me, show me, kiss each other. Yeah, so when Baba's asking you something, how shy you are, how you are, he kissed. So I went to Baba and I gave him a nice kiss and he did the same thing. And Baba said, Two people, they say they're in love and that's how they kiss. <laughs> 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 so he said, and then he pointed in his lips. <laughs> so that we did not fall kiss in front of him. We <laughs> <laughs> kissed each other, pecked on his lips, you know. So yeah, it was he, his blessings. Yeah. He helped us to that degree. But of course, but of course, Two boys. Uh, he did say. You finally broke the ice? Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. right, God. He broke the ice. That was the thing. Because, you know, it's like a. <coughs> anyway. it's, it's not in, you know, like in our culture publicly, you do, even though our population is much more than anywhere in the world. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't do things in public. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then well, one day, before leaving, my mother started asking me, I never asked Baba any question. I don't, did you ask Baba any questions? <laughs> that? Not that I can think of. No, me too. <laughs> Everything was answered there when you're in front of him. Whatever is in your mind, somebody else, or somehow it will be unraveled, it will be just there, so there was no question. But now my mother started getting worried, I'm going to England with him very soon. He starts sending me with him to stay at Vilu Villa for a few days and all that, you know, before leaving for England. So she said, ask him when, when will you be back from England, you know, when will you become returning back. So I, we're standing in front of Baba and uh, I said, Baba, and I said, my mother is asking me to ask you, <laughs> uh, when, when can we come back? So Baba first said, uh, come back after one baby, one son, and he made a free male baby well, he, son. He said, I will bless you with one son. I'll bless you with, you tell that part, I always... Yeah, you, so, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> he said, so Baba so said, yes, I'll bless you with one boy, and name him Merwan. And he even spelled it out, M-E-H-E-R-W-A-N. And then after a little while he said, no. My warehouse is full of beautiful souls waiting to take birth. Mm. So I'll bless you with two boys. Oh. Mm. Thank God he didn't say half a dozen. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so two boys we have. Um, now I think just to finish, there's one thing I forgot to say. Maybe this is a good time to say it. Uh, after Baba told me, this way back in 64, 65, that, that time when he told me he'd already chosen the right girl to be my wife. Again, as I said, most of the time when I'd be in Monday Hall with him, I'd just be a spectator, sitting there. Uh, I'd, I'd never ask Baba anything. From time to time, Baba would turn to me like he did then. Uh, and, and very frequently, he would turn to me and said, Dara, I'm God, love me. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, Baba, okay. That's all I could say. Um, then he would ask after what I did, uh, you know, I was working, so he said, yeah, how, how do you manage and stuff like that. And then one day he tells me, you know, Dara, marriage can take you to the heights of spirituality. But he stopped short there. He, should, he didn't say it through suffering. <laughs> And in a, you know, like even though we completely with Bab and things like that, but you know, that impressions, that Hindu background, that thing. Hindu ladies, that there's a day of the, you know, every year that day comes where you pray for the same husband for next lifetime. Mm -hmm. so of course, I never prayed or I never, they take fast and this and that. I did. But I told him one day, I said, I would like to marry him because I haven't told you to be enough yet. <laughs> but he says no. <laughs> Anyway, thank you dear folks, I think we've done enough damage. <laughs>
only got seven more minutes. Seven more minutes? Yeah. You... So I'll tell you about the after Bala blessed these two kids. Mm -hmm. He says, I'll give you to uh, beautiful souls. Oh yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. And now you want to tell them. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. <laughs> so he says, I'll bless you with two, two, two souls like love and kush. Love and Kush were Ram's two sons. Oh, Ram and Sita? Yeah. Then after a little while he says, this is why I interrupted her, after a little while he says, even better, I'll bless you with two souls like Prahlad and Dhru. And then he turns to me and he says, Dara, do you know who they are? Of course I had no idea, they could have been Batman and Robin or something. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, no problem. So he said, Amrit will tell you. He didn't even ask me if I know, she from but a I knew. Background, we yeah. never talked about it. So Amrit will tell you mm -hmm. about them. These were two young boys from some royal no, family or something, and something mm -hmm. happened when they were very young, and they left their home in search of God, oh. and they got God realizing very young. He didn't say I'll give you them like them. No, like, <laughs> yeah. So when Mehman and Jamshed were growing up, boy, they were trouble all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and arguing and this and that. I said, Dharam, as I said, every Advent God makes a mistake. This is a mistake. <laughs> Sweethearts, they're wonderful guys, both of them. <laughs> anyway, dear folks, thank you for having us here. And um, Lois, you know, you say we are special guests. Well, we're all special to him. To him. And we're all his guests. And uh, uh, when you send the invitation for to us as guest speakers, we're happy to be the guest speakers. Debatable. <laughs>